In this tutorial, you'll learn how to resize and crop images for the right platform, tone images, color correct images, and even straighten crooked photos. You'll really want to use your own photos to follow along, so choose four or five photos that you have and place them in a projects folder. So let's get started. I'm going to open up Photoshop and I'm also going to open up a photo. Now I've created a projects folder on my desktop with my last name and the word photo and inside I've created an images folder. So I'm going to choose one of these pictures and start with this one. Now this photo has a lot of issues but the first thing I want to check is does it have contrast? So you're looking for images that seem sort of flat, no true blacks or no true whites on the picture. And this one is a flat picture despite it being very yellow. So I want to adjust what's called the levels. And to do that, I want to make sure my adjustments pane or panel, which are these things on the side here, is open. So if you don't see this on the side, you can go to Window, Adjustments, and that'll make it appear. If you still don't see it, you want to make sure you're in the right workspace. So you want to make sure Essentials Default is selected. So here's my image and I want to make sure it has true blacks and true whites. I'm going to click on this second icon here on the first row of my adjustments pane. It's here that I see this kind of histogram and this is my whites, this is my midtones, and this is my darks in my picture. I'm going to bring this white triangle over to where the histogram starts. I'm also going to bring this black triangle, which is my shadows, over to where the histogram starts. I also like to move my midtones, these are your midtones, over to the left, just a hair. If I click on this eyeball here at the bottom of my adjustments pane, I can see the before, the flat picture, and the after. That's kind of a nice preview. I also want to show you on this layers pane down here, and I'll pull mine up so you can see it, it created an additional layer. It means that I wasn't working on my original photographs. All the changes I did were on a new layer, which is a good thing. So if I completely do not want to keep this, I could take this layer on my layers pane and throw it in this little garbage can here. And then I would be back to my original. So that's one of the advantages of using this adjustment pane versus if you were to go, I'm just going to move this back, up to image, adjustments, and levels this way, you wouldn't be working on a new layer. You would actually be working on your original photograph. So these are always kind of a safeguard to work in these panes here. Let's do one more. I'm going to go ahead and save this file, so I'll go to Save As. I created a folder in my Projects folder called Corrected Images. That way I don't save on top of my original. And I want to make sure I change this format to JPEG. So I'll call it Levels. I'll hit Save. If it asks you what quality do you want to save it at, I usually just say Hi. And then hit OK. By the way, if you don't like this background that you can see your desktop, you can always go to Window, Application Frame, and then it'll bring up the Photoshop gray background. So some photographers and designers like to work with this frame in the background, which is kind of nice. You don't get to see your desktop. Okay, let's open up another picture. I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to go in my Images folder, and I'll open up Levels 2. So here's this photograph of this beautiful woman, but it's a little dark. I don't really have true whites in this picture. Notice how the whites are kind of a little gray. So I want to brighten this a little bit. I'm going to go to my adjustments pane, and I can see here on my histogram my darks are okay. The picture is actually a little dark, but my whites aren't. So I'm going to drag this white over to where the histogram begins, and I'll drag my midtones over just a tad. I can look at the before, and I can look at the after by clicking on this eyeball here to toggle. So now that I've corrected the tones on this picture, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save it in that Corrected Images folder. And I'm going to make sure it's a JPEG, and I'll just leave the name Levels 2. Say you have a photograph that's sort of crooked, and you want to straighten it. If I click on this eyedrop tool here, and I go down to Ruler, and you can click on the little triangles at the edges of these to get more options. So I'm going to click on Ruler. Here, it gives you this little plus sign, which is your cursor. 
If I click once and drag a line and let go at the other end, all I did was go from one spot to another, choosing a horizontal line in my picture. I also can do vertical lines too. So you can do vertical or horizontal. Then I can go to image, image rotation, arbitrary, and it'll automatically select how this photograph needs to change to be straight. So I'll just hit OK, and there you go. My photo is a lot straighter than it was. But notice how it creates this white edge on the sides. You don't want that in your photograph. So I'm going to use my crop tool, which is right here next to the ruler, and I can go in here and recrop my picture by clicking and holding and dragging these edges so that that white frame does not show. And then I can double click and there my picture doesn't have that white edge. So that's a way to straighten your photographs from being crooked and then you want to crop them afterwards to get rid of that white frame. The next skill you'll learn is how to crop a picture, resize it for different platforms, so for the web or magazine. If you want to see your image in its entirety, you can hit Command minus or Command plus when you're in Photoshop and that'll increase or decrease the view of the picture. You're not really reducing the size. If we go to image, image size, you can see how large your picture is. So this is a raw image and it came in very large. It's 72 inches wide and 48 inches deep, which is really big if you think about it. The resolution is for the web. 72 dots per inch is a web resolution. If we want to play this picture for a magazine, we need to make it a high resolution image, at least three times this. So if I come over here and type in 300, I would be adding pixels that aren't there. This is an improper way to increase the resolution. So here's the right way to increase the resolution of a picture. If you click on this resample image and then type in 300, notice how my width and height are changing and they change proportionally as well because I have this locked here. So this is the proper way to change the resolution of an image for a print product. Then I hit resample image again and that locks it in. So I'll hit OK. Say the editor wants me to crop this image so that it's a 12 by 8, and you always say the width first. So if you click on your crop tool on the toolbar, notice how this properties pane up at the top will change. Anytime you use a tool here, the properties pane, the attributes up here will change as well. So this is asking me, what do you want the width and the height and the resolution to be? So I'm just going to type in those details, 12 I N by 8 I N at 300 resolution and then I'll hit enter. And now I can come in here and click and hold my crop tool. I'm going to crop this kit out on the left and then double click to have my image. If I go to image, image size, I can see here that my image is 12 by 8 at 300. So I'll hit OK. Now I want to save this picture for the magazine so I'm going to go to file save as I'm going to save it in my corrected images folder I'm actually going to name it my last name and the word magazine so that I know that's the magazine crop make sure this says JPEG hit save 8 quality is good hit OK and there's my magazine crop now if I want a web crop of this picture I can use my crop tool as well I'm still at a high resolution so I need to bring this down but I can come over here and type in 6IN, 4IN at 72 dpi and hit enter. So I can always go down up here. I just can't, if I want to increase the resolution, I really need to go to image, image size, and check the dimensions before I ever increase something up here. Because you want to make sure the pixels are there to begin with. So it's okay to go down in size, just not up in size using this method. So now I can come over to my photograph and I can crop a picture for the story for the web. I can use my little arrow keys to move my crop around. I definitely want to make sure that I don't have my crop outside of the picture because it will create a little white sliver of space. So I want to make sure I'm in the photograph itself. 
and I can again use my arrows to adjust accordingly and then hit enter to crop my picture. So it's kind of small now so if I hit command plus I can see my picture at a hundred percent right up here. The difference between saving for print and saving for web is that it's a little bit different when you save. If I go to file, save for web and devices, here is where I can save for the web shows my image sizes here in pixels I can hit save and then I can also save this in my corrected images although I'm gonna call this one web now I want to save a thumbnail of this image for the web and typically you see these thumbnails on websites as teases so to do a thumbnail I wouldn't use the entire picture right because it's gonna be played pretty small but just a portion of the picture First I want to set my dimensions and because I'm going smaller it's okay to do this up here. So my thumbnail is going to be 2 in for 2 inches, 1 in at 72 dpi and then I'll hit enter and now I can use my crop tool and come in here and crop just a portion of the picture. I'm going to give this woman a little bit of headroom so this is the space above the head and notice she has look room this is where she's looking. Now I can hit enter and crop my picture. I can hit command plus so that I can see my picture a little bit more. And it'll get pixelated. Notice how it gets pixelated when you blow it up to 400%. That's normal. We're working in 72 dpi. Now I can go to file, save for web and devices. I want to make sure this optimize is clicked on. And also just check my dimensions so those look good. And then hit save. And I will save this also in my corrected images folder. And I'll call this one thumbnail. The last thing I want to do is make sure that all my images are in the images folder. So right now I am just have the original image, which I've named my last name and the word original, in my images folder. This is the picture that I have not touched or toned or cropped. It's the original. So I want to put my other images, my magazine, my thumbnail, and my web image in that images folder so that I have all four. Now because I have a backup of this corrected images somewhere else, I'm going to go ahead and trash that. If I had a Word document, I'd also put it in here as well. And then of course I can just zip it up by hitting control, click, compress, and that will zip up the folder. In this tutorial, you learned how to resize and crop images properly. You learned how to tone and color correct and even straighten crooked photos. But this is only the beginning of Photoshop. There's still a lot more to learn. Basically, you learned how to clean up your art before you publish it.